As you're able, would you please stand? I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and is committed to me in faith shall not die forever. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God be with you all, and welcome to this celebration of Marguerite Kirkham's life here at St. James Church. And, uh, and for those who will watch this service on video, uh, we welcome you as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we remain standing, let's praise God uh, with uh, the hymn printed in your bulletin, Love Divine. you to be seated and I'd like to invite Reg to come forward and share some remembrances with us.
Thank you, Reverend Davis. And thank you all for being here for Mom this morning. Right now, I know Mom is shaking her finger and saying, I told you. I told you I want no one up there saying anything about me. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <coughs> Mom was born in November 1928 to Jim and Pearl England, who married here in this church in February of 1927. They arrived in a horse-drawn cutter. Mom's early life was shaped by global events, born toward the end of the Roaring Twenties, a young child during the Great Depression, where Grandpa cut wood for 50 cents a day to help keep them afloat. Mom became a teenager during the horrors of World War II. Mom told us she had a very happy childhood, though, and learned so much from her mom and dad. Mom was 16 in high school when the family home burnt in Maberly in January of 45, and her father was very badly burned. Mom had to leave school and took work at Wampools in Perth to help support the family. She had dreamed of being a teacher or perhaps a bookkeeper. Grandpa slowly recovered from the burns to his hands and face. Mom married the love of her life, James Kirkham, on August the 20th, 1947, and they started their new life together, a strong, happy marriage of 53 years. In 1952, Mom and Dad and Grandma and Grandpa England moved to Perth, bought the house across the street at 46 Drummond. Apparently, it was a real fixer-upper. <laughs> The four of them lived the rest of their lives there. Dad and Grandpa both worked for CP Rail as section men. Mom and Grandma knit, baked, made preserves, gardened, crocheted, and sewed. They were all very active at St. James here. Sixty-three years ago this month, I walked across the street from the courthouse with a police officer and a social worker from Children's Aid to 46 Drummond. I wore rubber boots, shorts, a t-shirt, and a blanket over my shoulders. The doorbell was rang, conversation ensued, I entered, my life changed forever. I was blessed with a wonderful family. I was a kid who got to live with his parents and grandparents. Imagine that. After that doorbell rang for me on that dark January Eve, Mom and Dad and my grandparents saw a need. After me, they fostered well over 100 children and later adopted Josh and Sarah's mom, my sister Darlene. Later, they babysat many more children for young families in the community. Mom's faith and strength were amazing. You all know her contributions to St. James over the decades. Her faith sustained her and us through the loss of her parents, dad, my sister Darlene, and my son James. She was a rock and a shelter for all of us. She was thrilled with new additions to the family, Alicia, Isabel, Frederick, and she was so happy with a surprise visit from Brittany in December for her 95th and to share the news that a new great-grandson is expected in June. Over the past few years, I would take Mum to many appointments, and as she aged, walking became more difficult for her. She would walk down the front step and gently take my arm. I would walk her to the car, and she would gently let go of my arm. Her touch is soft as a whisper, and I would always feel a quick sense of loss. You have gently let go of me for the last time, Mum, and I have now you have now taken Dad's hand in yours and are giving our Darlene and Jimmy hugs. I love you, and I miss you so much, Mum. Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all, grant us with your servant Marguerite and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection. That in the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to remain seated and have uh, Josh to come forward and share our first reading with us. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wine stream clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that it cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the grace, and the grace of this people he will take away from all of the earth. For the Lord has spoken, it will be said on this day. 
Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Good job. Would you join me in uh, our psalm for today, which is Psalm 90, uh, printed in your bulletin, and I invite you to uh, respond. We'll say it responsively with the congregation saying the, the parts in bold type. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are seven years, or perhaps eight years of life. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice in your salvation. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper us for the work of our hands. O prosper the work of our hands. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you're able. And Brittany's going to come forward and share our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. May only the truth be spoken and only the truth heard in your name, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> this morning in our daily prayers, we read Psalm 40. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God, how great your wonders and your plans for us. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me, I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. And I could imagine Marguerite saying those words. And from our psalm today, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon her and prosper us for the work of her hands, prosper her handiwork. 
Today, as we gather to celebrate and give thanks to God for Marguerite, we might be tempted just to console ourselves because a faithful servant of Christ lived a long and impactful life. That's pretty good all by itself. We have an old tradition in our church which we has kind of fallen out of use, but it used to be that um, in our old prayer book, uh, we would use the psalm we said together today, a bit odd at the beginning, I know, but um, uh, Psalm 90 uh, was always traditionally used when we would commend to God those who lived well beyond the 80 years that the psalm speaks of. So when someone accomplishes all she did, and reaches the great age of 95, we can say with some confidence that God prospered the work of her hands. And we would be lucky to be able to say the same one day ourselves. But there is so much more in our dear sister's life that we can celebrate over and above her years. And and some of those years, of course, Reg just helped us to remember And if Marguerite was, uh, you know, criticizing you, uh, Reg, I would say it was brief and fine, Um, but excellent. Uh, And all of those things and, and many more that came to our own minds as you were speaking culminate in the fulfillment of her lifelong faith by being received by God into her new life with him uh, and reunited with Jim and with Jimmy and Darlene. At the end of this day, that is our greatest consolation. When we are so very conscious of missing a devoted mother and grandmother and great-grandmother, a foster mother, a co-worker, a friend, and a 72-year member of this parish family. I might have mentioned this to someone last night because it was already on my mind, but I am sure that like me, most of us will long be moved to turn our heads down Drummond and look not on this side of the street to this beautiful building, but toward that tidy porch with the uh, green all-weather carpets. Uh, I think a porch that that Sonny built. Um, Remembering the one who sat there ready to catch our eye as we came along. Maybe we will always do that from now on. But today in this holy place, which Marguerite loved, and in which she so faithfully exercised her commitment to Jesus, there are many who know uh, all kinds of things we have received from her. And then beyond these walls, there are so many more. Reg spoke of the something like 146 children that Marguerite and Jim fostered. Let that sink in. Uh, and all the kids that she babysat, and the two children that became her own, and now their extended families. I wonder if you have been hearing, as I have, uh, in fact, rather movingly, all last week while she was in hospital, about the desperate need for more people like Marguerite and Jim that are needed in this moment to foster the huge number of children in crisis in Ontario. Have you heard that news story lately? Um, It it struck me on my way to the hospital one day. A few weeks ago on Epiphany, we were reminded that God promised us the antidote to the failure of leaders and public servants in the past and sadly still in the present. Through the prophets, we were reminded that God promised us that he would raise up true shepherds. That is, people who will take up the call to nurture and lead and protect others. Uh, Marguerite, I know, believed what we heard in the gospel that Brittany read so, so well for us. The greatest leader, the greatest caregiver, the greatest protector, and indeed the savior of us all, came to us in the person, person of Jesus. And she believed that. And he said to us, As we heard in the gospel, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. And we know that Christ came and lived and died and rose again for Marguerite and for the rest of us. But in breaking into our world on that first Christmas, and then 
having given us life by offering us his own, our Lord showed us also what we need from each other. Over the years, people like Marguerite offered themselves to be shepherds like Jesus. Including uh, judges and policemen and social workers showing up at the door on Drummond Street with a child in need, I'm glad that many people recognized the hard work and the care she was willing and able to give for the well-being of so many children in need. That's what a follower of the Good Shepherd does. Now, over the years, there were many Sundays when people who came to worship here uh, have told me that they remember seeing the woman with the short hair and the glasses with a child in each arm. I'm sure it didn't happen every Sunday, but that's the image that a lot of us have. And outside of Sunday mornings, others saw um, the gal with her sleeves rolled up looking after this place of worship and service and even being the only one willing to climb the ladder to wash the hall on the 30-foot the, the windows off the ground downstairs. So you'll see those later today, if you haven't seen them before. Um, I think Jim wouldn't do it. It had to be Marguerite. Still others remember standing with her in the sandwich-making assembly line, uh, hearing her very particular views about how the job should be done. Uh, or getting a phone call from her to make something for a hu our huge smorgasbord dinners or other dinners. And those really, really weren't invitations or requests. They were almost like commands over the phone. You will do the following, won't you? Um, and of course, for Reg and Darlene and Josh and Sarah, I think, there were those frustrating days of seeing and smelling all the pies lined up on the table at the house that were not for dinner, not for you, they were for the church. Uh, that must have been a little frustrating. Uh, last year, we thought it was high time that we celebrated one of our most faithful members with a party. And it was a party that we knew she would never give us permission to uh, hold for her. So in cahoots with Reg, uh, we picked a date uh, and didn't tell her. Uh, we planned a tea and we only let her know because he had to be fair, uh, in just enough time for her to um, dress up and be escorted over the road. And she asked many of us who she could blame for uh, this gathering, and we all dodged the question. But she had a smile on her face. And we went, when we put her photo uh, up on that old servery wall, uh, which you might see again uh, after the service today, she graciously received our attempts to honor her and to show her how much she meant to us. Uh, many of you know how, uh, and I've kind of just alluded to that, how hard it was to do things for someone who was very used to doing things, knitting things, baking things, and working hard for everybody else. It was hard. But somehow, people like Bob and Shirley, and uh, Joyce and Helen, and uh, others here, uh, were able to find uh, clever ways to get through her defenses. And she had her softest spot, of course, reserved for her children and their families. She was always so pleased, often at the back of the church, uh, to tell us uh, if she was going to be away, if she was going to see one of you. Uh, and especially to say that she was going to church with you uh, when she was away from St. James. She was keen on telling me that. I was delighted to sit at the kitchen table on Saturday and see that beautiful book that Brittany made just uh, last year with great memories uh, that her grandmother shared with her and some wonderful old photos. I was struck by the fact that none of the photos were labeled and I wondered, you know, who these people were and what the date was. But the photos were for her, and she knew who, were, 
uh, who the people were and the dates, so she didn't need any dates uh, put on those photos. What a marvelous and apt gift that was. Uh, it was just one example of the ways you returned the love she had for you. And uh, this, as I said last Sunday, is the way families and churches should work. It starts with the love and the dedication of our elders acting out their faith and the love of God, and then uh, it gets echoed out and back for generations. And as we think about just some of these things, uh, these will just be a small part of what we give thanks for today as we entrust one of God's dear daughters into his loving arms, knowing, as she taught us, that there is room for us all there, too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you're able, would you stand with me, please? And let us confess the faith of our baptisms as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's praise God now with the hymn, How Great Thou Art.
remain standing or kneel or be seated as is your custom for prayer. Let us pray, saying, Hear us, Lord. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear Hear us, Lord. Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die in sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and the gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give us courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Marguerite to your never-failing love which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. I invite you to stand, please, as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to praise God with uh, the hymn, Let Saints on Earth in Concert Sing. As we stand, let us offer ourselves and these gifts as we pray. God of mercy, accept the worship we offer you this day 
Increase, we pray, our faith, deepen our hope, and confirm us in your eternal love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through, your, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose victorious rising from the dead has given to us the hope of resurrection and the promise of eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the bread which has come down from heaven. Those who eat this bread will live forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now just a word about this Eucharist today. Um, we, of course, would love all of you to come forward to the, uh, to the Lord's table uh, together. 
Uh, and um, we welcome to the Lord's table to receive the sacrament, all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination. And um, if you'd like to come forward but would not be receiving the sacrament, please do come forward and just make a, a cross with your hands or bow your head, and that would indicate to me that you would like to have a blessing today. Uh, and as it says in the bulletin, if you need to have a gluten-free communion wafer, you just let me know when you come to the altar, and uh, I'll have those for you also. Let us pray. God of love, you have fed us at the table of your kingdom. Teach us to trust without fear in your eternal goodness and mercy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Marguerite Sophia Maud, acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now we're going to do something that is probably going to surprise a couple of people here today. Um, because uh, like Marguerite, I'm a fairly conservative guy. And uh, when we celebrate uh, the life of a faithful servant of Christ, we tend to um, want to stick to sacred music in worship. But as we leave the building today, and I hope you will join us, uh, we're going to take the casket out uh, through our accessible sidewalk because of the weather today. Um, but I'd like the rest of you to keep coming and follow us and right down to the parish hall for a time of fellowship and refreshment. And a luncheon has been prepared for us. Um, we're going to hear played a song, uh, which actually I, of course, know from an old movie, but uh, you uh, might know it uh, because, uh, is it Bing Crosby who sang it? Bing Crosby who sang it. Um, and though their parents, the Englands, were married here in 1926, uh, Marguerite and Jim were married in Maberly uh, at St. Albans there uh, in 47, 47? And while they were signing the register, this song was played. So, I'm going to invite the uh, pallbearers to come forward. And, um, and uh, the song is going to start to play. And the folks from Blair's are going to come down and help us. And we're going to make our way out this doorway. <laughs> 